Hey, this is Sam Black, and today I'm going to play some games with my take on Josh Utterlayton's uh, Jund Death Shadow Delirium deck. Um, I've kept most things pretty similar to what Josh had, but I've um, cut a Manamorphose for Mutagenic Growth. Um, I like having an instant that draws a card and goes to the graveyard, but I'm skeptical of the two mana play, and um, I know that mutagenic growth is pretty good in the deck, and still gets me an instant in the graveyard for delirium. Um, and I've cut inner flame acolyte for Tarmogoyf. Um I think the acolyte's just too cute, and I think that it's important to have um, access to creatures that cost numbers other than one to minimize um, how devastating engineer explosives is for you. Um, Tarmogoyf could just be in the sideboard, but I think it's a good enough creature to have access to in a deck with Traverse that it makes sense to play one main. Um, and then in the sideboard I've off, off, uh, gotten access to further uh, diversity of casting costs um, by adding a Tassiger. Um, I've also um, cut some flame slashes for a forked bolt and a lightning bolt. Um, I'm not sure about the forked bolt, but I think that having um, more options on what kind of removal I have is valuable. And the lightning bolt over flame slash, oddly, is not so much because I want to be able to target players with it, but because I found that. Um, when I was sideboarding in removal, I often wanted to cut mutagenic growth, and I was just, uh, finding that I had too many sorceries, and I think that the instant instead is better for delirium. Um, and um, I've also cut a Nile Spellbomb for Tormod's Crypt. Um, I think that the two mana is just a lot for this deck, um, and I think that against um, a lot of dredge decks, it's important to be able to um, develop your board while uh, deploying an answer, because you don't know necessarily which turn you're going to have to hit their graveyard, um, and you don't want to take a turn off playing a creature. Um, so I think that uh, costing zero mana to play is actually pretty valuable. Um, I'm still going to try the split on Tormod's Crypt and Nile Spellbomb in case I find a matchup where I want Nile Spellbomb and not Tormod's Crypt, or just to try both of them out, or because um, there's some value to having a variety. Uh, I don't think that very many dredge decks are attacking Graveyard Hate with Pithing Needle, but um, that kind of thing is possible, and um, just in general I know that uh, varied sideboard cards can be useful against them. Um, other than that, uh, I've kept things pretty similar. Um, the bit that I've played with the deck, I've been really impressed by Gore Clan Rampager in particular, um, specifically its ability to get past Spellsgate. Um, and I'm um, interested in learning more about how good Traverse is. Um, this deck definitely plays very differently than the Death Shadow decks that I'm used to. Um, Narlwood Dryad is definitely not as consistently fast as Wild Nacatl, um, and Traverse can take time to turn on, but having more Death Shadows is very powerful. Um, also, not having become immense is significant, um, but it doesn't seem devastating. Um, I think that with more consistent access to Death Shadow, uh, you can just use that with uh, Gorkhan Rampager and Battle Rage, um, and then consistent access to Gorkhan Rampager through Traverse to accomplish a lot of what the comments was doing. So uh, the change makes sense to me, and I'm interested in seeing how this plays.